Beta, as we already know, is used in the CAPM equation to find the cost of equity. Finding a publicly traded firm's beta is pretty straightforward linear regression of the returns on the stock against the returns on the market over a period of time. Beta is the designated measure of a firm's systematic risk, its contribution to the risk of a well-diversified portfolio. What we've gone on to learn is that a firm's equity beta is affected by the level of the firm's debt. Thus, if the firm's level of debt changes, so does its equity beta. In this tutorial, we're going to look at two examples of unlevering and relevering a firm's beta based on a change in the firm's level of debt. These are the two formulas we're going to work with. They are presented in a slightly different form than in most textbooks to highlight when you multiply and when you divide. The equation on top converts an unlevered beta to a levered one. You multiply. The equation below reverses the process, removing the effects of debt from a firm's beta. Both equations require the percentages of debt and equity and the firm's tax rate. Now let's look at the examples. Our example company A currently has no debt and a beta of 1.05. They're planning to change to 30% debt. Their tax rate is 40%. Since A has no debt, their 105 beta is unlevered. We want to lever it to reflect the effect of a 30% debt level. Levering a beta increases it, so we'll be multiplying. Below the given data, the components of the equation are calculated. 1 minus t, the percentage of equity, and the ratio of debt to equity. With those components, we can compute the levered beta of 1.32. Just as an added review, consider the effect this increase in beta has on the firm's cost of equity and the weighted average cost of capital. Given a risk-free rate of 4%, market return of 8, and a cost of debt of 6, we can see the changes the addition of debt brought. With zero debt, the cost of equity and the cost of capital were both 8.2. With 30% debt, the cost of equity rises to 9.28 to reflect the added risk focused on the equity holders, but the cost of capital declines to 7.576. Think about why. The after-tax cost of debt is 6% times 1 minus 0.4, or 3.6%. So even with the higher cost of equity, the addition of debt decreases the cost of capital. Now this was a fairly simple example. Now let's look at company A again. Now they have 30% debt, but they're considering increasing that percentage to 40%. So our first step, assuming we didn't know our results from example one, would be to unlever A's beta of 1.32 to remove the effect of the 30% debt. Unlevering will decrease beta, so we'll be dividing. Using the data as an example one, we can get back to our unlevered beta of 1.05. Now we'll follow the same steps as in example one to lever the 105 beta to incorporate 40% debt. No surprise, higher percentage of debt, higher beta. Comparing the 30% debt to 40% debt and assuming the cost of debt at 40% level rises to 6.5, the cost of equity increases even more but the cost of capital declines again. Same reason, even with a higher cost of equity, with more debt, the lower cost of debt brings the cost of capital down. So when do we need to unlever and lever? Three specific cases. As in our example one, a firm has no debt and wants to evaluate the impact on their cost of equity and cost of capital of adding debt to their capital structure. You lever. As in example two, a firm has some debt but wants to evaluate a change in the percentage of debt in their capital structure. Unlever and then relever. And number three, you want to estimate a beta for a non-publicly traded firm, project, or division. Find comparable firms, their betas, and their percentages of debt. Unlever each comparable firm's beta, average the unlevered betas, and lever this average to reflect the debt level of your target. So it's an unlever and a relever. Those were the three primary occasions to solve for beta unlevered or beta levered. Keep in mind, a levered beta is larger than an unlevered beta for the same firm. Levering adds the effect of debt. It increases beta, so you multiply. Unlevering removes the debt effects. It decreases beta, so you divide. Hope walking through these examples and the uses of levering and unlevering equations will help you feel more comfortable about when to use them and how to use them.